thanks for staying with us. The disturbing issue of sexual abuse within religious communities, particularly involving pastors and female members, is slowly eating deep into the fabric of our society. Sexual deviance within religious contexts can be sensitive and challenging. However, striking a balance between upholding religious values and addressing the complexities of human sexuality requires a thoughtful and compassionate approach. So tonight we're asking, how can we address sexual deviance in religion? Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818-038-4663. So Mary, have you seen the documentary? Yeah, I was actually in the third episode yeah? this evening. <laughs> what were your thoughts or were your feelings? <laughs> Okay, so I might not be emotional as mm. everybody is, but I found it very intriguing. Mm -hmm. um, I could see how consuming power is, and I could tell that he had a vision. Absolutely. Yeah, he had a serious vision, and what struck out for me the most, I mean, it's such a positive thing, but yeah, um, belief. Mm -hmm. So he had he the believed vision. that he could. Yo, because <laughs> Uti, if you look at this guy, he's a local man. Mm -hmm. So there's no finesse of I'm trying to, you know, impress you people. He just knew what the people wanted. And yep. he had a vision. And he served it up. I'm telling you. Like so calculated, yeah. do you yeah. understand? And you know the involvement with white people. He he see he wasn't even thinking on a local level because in the beginning you hear one time when he said he said why well, small crowd now soon we're going to be a large crowd. And I'm just like, wow, wow, yeah, wow, wow, wow. When you read con artists, you know in books we see white people. You know it's a bit like mm, nice, but this is like the scale and the scope of it was home. grand. The thought process behind it, I mean, like you said, let's be honest, it was genius, right? Yes. Whichever position you take, he he harnessed certain things. He studied the sort of huge American tele ministries. He yes. knew the power of media. He knew the power of visuals. He knew the power of storytelling. And so before social media was social media, he knew the power of storytelling. Yes, because he read and everything. he understood distribution. He understood how he was going to get his message out there. He understood the investment that it took because early on for him to actually be paying for the white people to fly in just so he could get validation. And it went far. Because I'm seeing Korea, I'm seeing Israel, I'm seeing all these countries, right, that are represented. And I remember the first time I heard about um, TB Joshua, right? It struck me because that format, it was TD Jakes. And I was like, is this person trying to copy um, TD Jakes? And they said, oh, no, this is TB Joshua. And I'm like, who's TB Joshua? This is in Nigeria, big church, everything. And I'm like, I don't know anything about it. But they said, no, there are plenty of white people there. Ah, if you see, did, 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 did. And of white people do you know, a whole lot of I, I never sort of paid attention to it, but I literally had goosebumps when I was watching. In fact, it was in the first, because the, the first I heard of it, of course, as, as with everything else, you see people on social media. So somebody posted and I started to see the comments. And usually I don't pay attention to these things. But then the power and the effusiveness behind those comments, I was like, okay. Let me check this out. And of course, you know, started to watch the videos. And halfway through the first one, I literally had to tell myself, Uti, you have to keep going. Because yeah. the genius of it, of seeing somebody think through this thing, bring it to life. You know, when you see, I think the first bit that got to me was when they showed a clip of um, people playing with, um, so not people playing, people carrying Concrete, church members, white and black, carrying concrete. Like they literally had what they call that is it pong pong on their head. <laughs> and, they, and I was like, and, and, and the thought process through it of what essentially is like a systematic, I mean, let's call it what, we, we, what it is based on what we saw, brainwashing. Hypnosis. With the isolation, with the, I mean, 
there's no more powerful latch than faith. And the bit that I think hurt me the most was these were people who were really looking for God. Yeah. They were not just like, these were people who were genuinely looking for God. I have a problem. I understand that there is a God. I believe in this God and I am looking for God to solve my problem. Do you know how hard it is to even get people to believe in God? Then to now take the ones that believe in God and just completely destroy it. That was the it most made, made mess of painful part for me. But then when you look through, his church is just one church. I mean, we've talked so many times on the show about the proliferation of religion in Nigeria. What's that uh, phrase? Religion is the opioid of the masses. Mm -hmm. Like, it we really understand is. it. It is. We it understand really it. Is. You know? People are coming to these churches because they need healing. They need all sorts of things. And we can see it's that it's like, not just black it's people. Like it's not just black people. But do you see how they strategically built on that system? I mean, I think the entire first episode didn't really talk much about the sexual the part of it. The second one. But then the second one sort of really delves into it. And the sad part for me was when it kicked in, and it, it sort of, I don't remember, oh yeah, that's true. I used to hear these stories. People used to sort of, it had been mentioned in different places at different times. And I think one of the core characters that they mentioned, I'd seen a video of her maybe like four years ago or something like that. And it brought it back to the fore. But you know, there's nothing more powerful than a story. You know, a story you can follow. Characters that have been developed, <laughs> then you see what they were going through. And you know, this is not just recreations. Because he was so big on media and on visuals, there was video to see it. Then we got to one part in the video where they had brought a lady to the church to obviously be prayed for because she had been raped. And he said, forget about the rape. She's a temptress. Uh, yeah, I, I, I remember that part. So he, he would, you know, coin the story. Even when the, the guest house um, collapsed, down, he sent money to the people to the the families of the bereaved and was saying that you, sh you should be happy that um um she she died for you or something and i was like wow it was it was intense to watch and i will admit that i mean there's lots of things wrong with it but if we even sort of move away if we if we sort of try and circle back to you know our question today about the church and the sexual issues it's not unique to synagogue. It's not. It's not unique to the late T.B. Joshua because there are so many... I mean, the Catholic Church has had its own issues. Yeah, I mean, almost every denomination, yeah, every denomination has had its issues, whether it be with boys, whether it be with girls. And I ask myself, what is the real trigger? Is this just human? Is this just deviance? Like, is it because... Why is it so fixated? Is it focused on the church? Some people will say, oh, it's a spiritual attack. Some people will say, oh, it is proximity and um, what's the word now? It's denial and proximity when you sort of take the, relig the religions and doctrines that don't allow their um, men of God per se to have wives or whatever. Somebody will say, oh, it is opportunity and denial. Oh. That's that one. <laughs> then in this case, you take people that have power because unfortunately, with particularly the Pentecostal movement, as we saw again in this video, those pastors take on a godlike essence. Mm. People follow them with complete Worship. devotion, complete, you know, there was a song they were singing in there that was about him. And I was like, ah, we've moved this thing now from praising God to praising the man. But even that is not unique to him. I remember the first time I encountered a protocol team of a church not even in nigeria abroad and it's made me till this day have a problem with protocol team because it seemed all of a sudden like i'm like if you're a pastor in a church the very nature of a pastor of what pastoral care is is to care for people then you are not accessible you are almost like gates i'm like so if i can't access you as my pastor why am i in your church power, power, power. so that aspect of the power that then comes to play the worship that comes to play, the fact that people seem to lose all reason mm. 
around the things that you do. Let's even, I mean, this one, from the video, you can see that it was clear. The tactics were clear. Isolate, give them the narrative, keep feeding it and feeding it and feeding it. You know, when you start to convince a virgin that she's lusting, you know, you keep feeding it and feeding it and feeding it. And I'm thinking to myself, what exactly? I mean, his case was, was classic. But then I was thinking back to, it was a few years ago now when, um, what's her name? Uh, Timmy Dakolo's wife, Busala, mm. when she came out again, also um, against a very po popular pastor. And similar things happened because one of the things that actually I think really triggered me, in fact, I went to get my nails done today, and as I walked into the salon, they were having this discussion. As I heard it, I said, please, I beg you, just, you would change the topic. <laughs> And I, I just know. put my headphones on yeah. because I just didn't want to be triggered any more than yeah. I already had been. Because in the midst of what seems to be glaring evidence, people say, hey, but he's not alive to defend himself. Why is he coming out now? And I'm like, excuse me? What has him been alive got to, got do, to do with, this? with anything? This is clear. Regardless yeah, of, even if we're not even trying to be spiritual or anything, this is a cult. No, but that's what it is. Like, and it's not... I mean, it's not for any good purpose. Like, I can't see how you're uplifting people if you're, you know, caring. You're tearing them, them down they to can't control sleep. them. They can't. They have to call you to say good night. Please, where on where? No, like, it's not part of your body. It's just you classic. That this is a, like okay. you said. He had a that plan. You need the person to be alive to defend that. He has a plan and he stuck to it. But I mean, if we even take, I mean, we've all seen. I'm sure. So many videos, have been, so many movies have been made about these cults. And when you were just talking now about the having to call him and all of that, it brings back a very old one that happened in the 80s in America, which was the siege at Waco in Texas, which was another man also claiming that he was Jesus and that all the children, all the female children in the compound were his wives. And he was sleeping with the mothers and sleeping with the children. So this issue, to be fair, is not a new one. This one was just on a very calculated, very extreme, it's, very it's high so ground. It's so because, intriguing. you know, when the guest house collapsed, I didn't even know that, you know, they kept calling it a guest house and I, I had heard that, oh, a lot of white people live there. I didn't know it was a paying business, that it was actually in truth, it was a whole, they built it for people to come and people to pay. So the strategy of come and stay for free had paid off. Now, when you come, you pay five star premium rates. And then for a building that was clearly not fit for the purpose and not built in the right way. So this context now of there are people that even till today, I guess in this world, when they say there's somebody for everybody, there really is somebody for everybody. Because till this day, people, if you go on social media right now, tons of people are still supporting him, are still saying, one, he's not alive, eh, he's not true. Even with all the, I mean, there were rumors yeah. before. Now you have evidence. Evidences. It's not just Nigerians. It's not just South Africans. It's not just the Brits. Like yeah. everybody is represented, right, in this video to tell their story. Yeah. If he was alive, like I asked, what would he have said? He's going to stand on. If he I mean, gone, this if he has gone this far. Do you think he's going to come out and confess anything? So these rumors had <laughs> been there. Um, I mean, I think he passed in 2021. The video I saw of the lady, the main Nigerian lady, uh, Bisola, she, I had seen a video of her in like 2019. I'm like, beyond actually all the stuff they put out about her being a terrible person and all of that, what do you say to defend yourself? Nothing, nothing. So if he's alive today, I'm very interested, and perhaps maybe when our callers call in, I'm very interested to hear what it is that their thoughts are around. Is there something that he could actually say today if he were alive? to defend himself? Is there something the church could say to defend themselves? But more importantly, I think we now need to ask the question, how do we deal with this? Because this is not unique to synagogue. Yeah. This is, as we can see, the other high profile case, that one too never made any headway. And they're all from top leaders. Exactly. In so, the yes. Um, so if it's still hierarchy. happening and it keeps happening, how do we deal with it? Because it's now a problem. It's a very real problem. When we know the problem, what kind of solutions do we put in place? The way, like I said, that we've elevated men of God. 
do we now need to start convincing people to look? The word of God is in the Bible. Read it. Is it the same lack of education that is triggering this and impacting this? But then it's happening all over the world in different countries. So how can we really stop it? I hope that when our callers call in, they can give us some of their thoughts around how we can manage the situation. But I think we can take a short break now and when we come back we'll open our phone lines and we'd really love to hear what you have to say. If you've just tuned in, it's our ladies night out and we're discussing how to address sexual deviance in religion. Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818-038-4663. Our phone lines are now open. You can call us on 702 500 We really would love to hear what you have to say on this topic in fact eh? hmm. it is it's so intriguing <laughs> it's actually so intriguing like i mean my colleague was like oh she had goose bombs i'm like except people are not seeing what i'm seeing but i'm just like for me i don't know why i take some positivity out of it like it's giving me ginger to say that if this man can believe in himself, <laughs> you're all even at a different level. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just like, if this man, if you can believe in yourself, why couldn't you use for something it for positive? Good. Imagine what's going to come out. Just actually imagine. But I mean, it shows so many things. And one of the other things that and how really, people are. apart from even the gullibility, you know, think about our people. Think about, let's leave the masses. He got to the cream and the crop of society. He got to presidents. He got to prime ministers. He got the, um, what's that thing in Nigeria? The order of Nigeria, the, 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 the title. So wow. how, how is it possible? Okay, I think we have our first call. Yeah. Good evening. Thank you for calling. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Please let's have your name and where yeah. you're calling from. My name is Pastor Ladipo. Good evening, Pastor Ladipo. Thank you. Let's hear what you have to say, please. Okay, what I have to say is this. I discovered something that is a level in man we attain, especially in religious circles. Mm. If the man is not careful, people will begin to worship him. Yeah. And once that worship starts, it will be difficult for such a man not to abuse that privilege. Absolute power. I think one of the things that happened in this man's case was that even while he was alive, he faced a lot of oppositions like this. Mm. Now he is dead. Opposition are still coming up. Me, I'm not trying to play the devil's advocate. But that is daughter. Is it that a lot of people didn't know that this man have a daughter somewhere that they didn't talk about all through? Why the man was alive? That now she's coming out. Anyway, when you come up with a story like this for a dead man, the man is not there to defend himself. So, so I like that. I like that you've said that he's you. not there to defend himself, right? But if he was going to defend himself, in your opinion, what would he say to you that would counter everything that you saw in those videos? I mean, even the daughter that okay. you mentioned, Thank you. she looks like him. Oh, yes. Thank you. You see, it, okay, you know what? You know what? For me, the man will not defend himself. That is just the truth. Even why he was alive, when great allegations were laid against him, he didn't put out to defend himself. I you getting him? He will still defend himself. That is just the thing. But yes. only God will save us. When it comes to religious leaders like this, people attach too much honor that is due for God mm. to them. And they get away with a lot of nasty things. Yeah. God will bless us. Thank, Thank you, you for calling. Thank you. God will bless you too. Um, I mean, I like what he has said there. That's a very key thing. Um, and when we are talking about how to address these issues, I think that is one very important thing for both the, con the, the congregation and the pastors themselves to look at. Because, yes, power can be very intoxicating. Mm -hmm. So... When you find that your church has started to grow to a certain size, when you find that you, um, your congregation is starting to address you in a certain way, in a godlike format, you have to really now start to ask yourself, what do I need to do to take the spotlight away from me? 
It's almost like some praise and worship ministers. You hear them when they're getting into the spirit. They're almost sort of saying, you know, this is not coming from me. This is coming from the spirit of God. So for those pastors that are coming up, that are starting to gain that sort of popularity and that status, if I hear what Pastor Ladipo is saying, there's a responsibility to continue to return the spotlight to mm -hmm. God and away from yourself. Because let's be honest, power does amazing things to people. We see it with our leaders. We see it, I mean, leaders in all sphere of life. Yes. Yeah, so Any like, small power, yeah, you're going to go crazy. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I'm wondering. Like, mm. as in, who's going to call them to order? Let's say they just can't see that, um, you know, they've gone past that. Mm. Because we're not talking about subordinates now. We're talking mm. about the apex in mm. each of these religious you know hierarchies mm. so who is going to hold them accountable so perhaps within the church leadership structure there has to be somebody that or people that can call them to order but let me take this comment quickly it says i really worry about the gullibility of nigerians to see such a package and yet question the validity of it how we can defend such a terrible lifestyle all in the name of religious um, affiliation the fact that they didn't see it as a warning to beware of false prophets that would litter the earth in these times i've just been wondering what manner of humans we are since the videos were released i feel bad for the damaged persons and pray for their healing true healing from god that's from tyre from ikeja thank you for sending that in i mean <laughs> there's so many ways in which you can um, really start to shoot for hopefully because there's no indication that this will never happen again we have churches because we're still saying we're still giving indications that yes. we don't even believe that this we is don't believe that this is glaring in the face of all of this people are still saying i mean if he was alive he, could, he can't defend himself where you know i've heard all sorts i mean i've been triggered so many times i can't even you can't even imagine right because for me there's a larger issue at play here right we already know that we have issues around rape culture. Yes. We already have issues about around gender, right? We have a culture of silence. We have a culture where we're still in the part of the world where the victims get the blame. Mm -hmm. Now, in the face of all this evidence, in the face of women who are clearly traumatized, right? Then to see that people are still saying, eh, if he was alive or this, this, this. Like literally, why would anybody watching this video speak up? If they went through, it doesn't even have to be at the hand of the pastor. Any kind of sexual molestation, why yes. would they speak up? This takes us back. Because if I see this, I see women who have been bold enough to come out and say this is what has happened. And then I'm seeing people's reactions on social media. I've just been like, well, let that me just be quiet. Because who wants to really, having gone through this, be victimized in a different way again? So there's so many, so many implications around this story and you know where it has gone i mean i can understand it we're, here we're talking about sexual issues but i mean at one point in time the touch not my anointed was like a sing song everybody's like ah no you know this is the man of god and i always you know with that phrase man of god i always say please which one comes first shame is man man of god meaning he was a man first because before he became of god and every human being is fallible. Yeah. It doesn't even have to be in a sexual nature. And again, this is where, um, like Pastor Ladipo said, you've built the person up to that point where he's now godlike. Then you forget that he's a human being. Then when they make a mistake, then it becomes, ah, no, they can't be, they can't. But a man of God is first and foremost a man. They struggle with the spiritual attacks. They, they themselves are moving targets. Then if you then add the self-belief now that this status they've they've you know tied to you you now truly imbibe it as he did because mm -hmm. calling to say good night was that to check maybe to trigger who do i pick tonight or you know what the occult <laughs> no it did i mean i, I like the place in the video where the, the lady said who joins a cult but that's what all these cults that's how they start yeah because yeah. you come in thinking you're going to get something else then you are brainwashed into believing what the, whatever the ideology is. And you never... Re and he did the classic thing. Isolate you from your family. Isolate you from everybody that can tell you, come, is your head correct? I, pure isolation. And then you keep feeding. And you know, if you sort of see the way the videos were structured, in video one and video two, I kept asking myself, so 
I mean, I believe in miracles. Let's be clear. I'm a Christian. I absolutely believe that miracles happen. But I kept asking myself, because, you know, the videos were sort of, the stories were told in, in parts. Yes. And they never sort of talked about those miracles. Because those things looked crazy. The types of medical conditions they were calling, the types of uh, miracles that were happening, it will catch anybody. Even if it's just for you to say, you know what, me, I want to use my eyes to see. I want to go there. Then you don't know that you're walking into a den where they're now going to peel your layers away and just, you know, take advantage. But the truth of it was, the thought process behind, even in identifying the victims of a certain age, of a certain gen, like, the well, guy, well out. the guys who were looking after him, that was another scary part. The five guys. The yeah. five story, whatever, boys. Like, literally. I, I, I didn't understand the cutting of his beard and... Putting in the mouth of the fish, my dear. So, so I, I'm so, even trying to stay away from all of that occultic because <laughs> that, that whole prayer fish? mountain... It, but is there any biological thing that that I, makes I, fish Well, no, it wasn't meant to be a biological conversation. Of course, that's purely occultic, of course. But, I mean, and that man on that side... I mean, you could obviously tell that the storytellers also didn't understand the significance of maybe occultic things because mm. they really sort of told it at yeah, a very yeah, high level. Yeah. You know, if it was Nollywood style, they would have dug into it and, you know. But it really was, um, it was scary. It was shocking. It was unbelievable. What's he going to defend him? I don't know. I, no, I've even left that part of the conversation because Maybe anybody that, that says he should call and he should come and defend himself, uh, you know, I, I was hoping that more callers would call in and tell us exactly what their thoughts what were their because, thoughts are... I mean, we've seen it. Anybody that, I want to say that anybody who is rational that has seen that video there knows that there was just too many things wrong. But, I mean, again, back to... How do we deal with this? Because it's not a it's not a synagogue, it's not a unique problem to synagogue. The responsibility on pastors, the responsibility on church, but then the responsibility, I think there are a few pastors that I've seen who consistently refer people when they're preaching the word to the Bible. Yes. Everybody you have a Bible, it's but in every yeah, language or I, almost every don't language. You even have consciousness to, to know right and wrong but well, you know consciousness is based on different factors common sense all of those things you know it's they're all they're all in there right yes but something so these people were brainwashed mm. you know? but something in them is still fighting back do you understand something in you is still fighting back to if the guy you know invites you in his room for the first time you know he's doing all of that there's 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 you don't need bible or no but you know by the time they got to that point they were they were fully brainwashed at that point they had sleep deprivation they you remember when she even sort of talked about how they looked malnourished and then they started to wear makeup and dress better so clearly the approach was nefariously flawless because you did not you made sure they were sleep deprived you cut them off from everybody that could have shown them love and triggered them and asked them the right questions at that point they were more like robots because you walk into a room somebody you think you know think about how you revere a god and then that god tells you do something ah you not you be hop to hop to it's that's what happens i mean even in the military it happens I well you know so you know i i try not to say ah never never could happen because again those the strategy they should they they use it happens in every it day. has it it is tried and tested mm -hmm. so to say i just pray that i never find myself in any such situation because that method is proven and it works so you caught people who had a vulnerability who were looking for god you put them in a situation where you were then the only thing that they saw the only thing they had to refer to you put them together so they were a collective so it became more than the power of one like you know even when you want to have a unique thought and then you see all these other people around you all saying daddy 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 or you two will be like well you know human beings also we conform so it is it, i mean when you <laughs> when you watch it i literally want to say that it is god that gave the people that broke out 
it's God that gave them the strength and the unction to break out. Because if you look at even the, the, the lady who had the video after she left, where she came back and tried to confront him, she was so distressed, shouting at the gate. You know, he had text, and I'm like, this is someone who is clearly traumatized. This is somebody who is coming to the dawning of the realization that this thing has happened to me. I don't even want, I mean, the part about his daughter, that one was just too distressing. Like literally telling people they can slap her, they can beat her, all of those things, you know? So th there, was a, there was a deep level to it that if you think about it, it's deeply unsettling. But like we said, it is, it's not a new problem. We have to start to figure out how to empower people. We need you to make sure that you are, you are learning the word, you are finding, because it's, it's very difficult to say find somebody because at this point, anybody, if anybody. A, 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 a person like this could get to this point, everybody mm -hmm. can be, sense. you know, yeah. So. In that sense, it's, you know, do you want to, you have to find someone who can really teach you the Bible, encourage you to get into, not even just the Bible, your, your, you know, your books of faith, get into it so that you can learn for yourself. So that when it doesn't smell right, when it doesn't sound right, when it doesn't look right, yeah. you find a way and you run. I, I remember seeing a comment somewhere on social media where a lady said the first time she came to the church with her mom, she was, I think she said she was 17, and that somebody came and asked if she was a virgin and she was like, what has being a virgin got to do with coming to church? And she ran off. And that now when she's seeing this, that in understanding what she potentially escaped, that is just, it's a lot. And you know, it, sometimes you just think, and this man, I mean, he did it fantastically because when he died, Everybody said, no, we know these stories. It's not a new thing. But people were still crying. We are his widows. We are this. We are that. Why? I'm not surprised. Because he was also philanthropic and the people are hungry. Poverty. He's giving rice. He's giving money. Poverty. He's got the it's powerful a story of There's miracles. A poverty. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's too much. No, 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 no. I literally had to force myself to say, you know what? I need to watch this video all the way through to you know the three videos all the way to the end but the most painful thing for me was how somebody took advantage of people's faith yeah and it is still happening and that is the bit that as a religion we have to stand up against the genuine pastors out there the genuine christians out there please talk to people about your faith Tell people the right thing. Tell people to understand that there is no way that it is okay for a... Because it happens. Even all these places of deliverance where they, people, it, it, they say they take people torture for witchcraft, for mental illnesses. There's nothing they are flogging out of you. It, it, you know, if you, if you can't emulate anything, emulate Jesus. The Gospels are there. People can read about it. People can see that what he could not speak to, what he could not, like, literally, it is right there in languages. But it goes beyond that now where I say everybody that has a genuine belief in God and loves God and loves their religion has a responsibility to make sure that they are actually, this is not now, uh, you know, as people say, oh, yes, go out and preach the gospel. We're not, they don't even say you want to preach the gospel, but make sure that people truly understand what the gospel is. Yes. So that when you see these things, because I remember there's, there's another particular church that also has this sort of um, type of focus followership. and followership, and dedication. Father. I remember so one day, I just heard somebody shouting, um, ah, what was he, he was saying now? I think somebody asked him his name and he kept saying, no, I'm chosen, I'm chosen. I'm like... Why does he keep saying I'm chosen? Somebody was explaining to me, oh no, it's a church. And, and you know, so there's all sorts of doctrines that you see out there. And when you encounter it, please, 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 we have to start to educate people because you have to shine a light. You have to shine a light where there is darkness for there to be clarity. Yeah. So if we're going to start to, you know, to work against these things, I know that a lot of the churches, for example, the Catholic Church has put a lot of work into, you know, trying to, to, to distance itself from this image and, and, and all of that. But 
there has to be clear work. Um, organizations like CAN really now need to start taking a clear eye to monitoring pastors as they get bigger to understand are they abusing this power? Mm. Are they What's taking really advantage of people? Churches. Because we have some mega, mega sized churches in this country. We really do. Mm -hmm. So we have a responsibility to make sure that the thing that is dearest to us, the faith, the gospel, the message of Jesus, the sacrifice that he has made, is not torn apart and, you know, taken away from people who are genuinely seeking him, who are genuinely seeking miracles. Because miracles do happen. But it is just sad that in this day and age, it has happened and it is still happening. And there's no indication that it won't happen again. So, I mean, it's really been a, <laughs> it's been a very tough day for me, you know, having to, to, to have these conversations and, you know, watch the videos. It really is, is heartbreaking. And even for the people who say, I think there was another conversation we were having around, or oh, if they had followed through, um, they could have, you know, there could have been prosecutions. Why did they wait till he was dead to bring it out? Again, I refer to the collapsed building case. This is almost how many years later? I think that happened in 2019 or so. This is almost five years later, and there's been no, no, um, what's the word now, prosecutions, right? Even though the coroner came out to say this was what it was, all of these things have been said. But as with our country, there's been no apparent consequences. For someone of that kind of Yeah, thing. there's been no apparent consequences. It's... So there is just so, so much that um, we need to do or we need to think about in terms of protecting people. Um, is there anything you want to add before um, we wrap up, just as your final thoughts on this issue and, and how we move forward as a well, faith? I mean, I still believe that um, as human beings, um, we've given a discerning spirit and let's try as much as possible to listen to that inner still voice. Um, I mean, sometimes it's hard because there are lots of manipulation techniques and, you know, all of that out there. But that nudging spirit, if your spirit nudges you to say, I don't think you should do this thing, the earlier and the better we begin to listen to that spirit. Sometimes it happens in the most mundane ways. It might not even be something that is, uh. you know, really big to say you're right and wrong. But uh. then there's always that nudge, you know, in you. When yeah. you're rude to someone, you have that... That's, that's not me, uh, you know. So the, we should learn to listen to that inner voice. Yeah. It would really, really help help us. Help with this. I think yes. you have a comment as well. Uh, okay, let's see. I say, um, good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying, hashtag ways. How to address sexual... Sexual deviance. Sexual deviance in religion. It is very simple. The pastors that are involved should be exposed. The bodies of the so-called women are holy and should be respected. Not all pastors are born again. Sister Oti, Happy New Year to you. I missed you a lot. My name is Daniel Ido, Ways regular fan. Thank you. Thank you so much, <laughs> Daniel. And I think your comment is very apt. The yes. bodies are the temple of God and they are absolutely holy and the pastors have a responsibility. It's been a, a fantastic conversation, even albeit quite triggering. Um, <laughs> it would be amiss to say that we hope that wherever this is happening, that people know that they can find help, they can speak out, reach out to family members, to close friends, um, and really give yourself the opportunity to be heard um, and hopefully to get some solution um, or respite for the situation that you find yourself in. Um, I mean, the resources uh, abound for um, sexual molestation and those kinds of issues. So please do um, find the opportunity um, and the strength to reach out to get support. Before we go, do ensure that you follow us on Instagram at We Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, um, follow all our social media engagements. Remember to like, share, comment, and invite your friends and family. Don't watch us alone. Share the conversation to watch us and follow us. So if you missed today's quote, here it is again. Of all possible sexual perversions, religion is the, one, is the only one 
to have ever been sci scientifically um, systematized, and that's from Louis Aragon. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Have a good evening.